Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar on how to increase your operational efficiency and fraud intelligence with Guardian Analytics Fraud Analytics. Uh, the webinar will start shortly. People are just still joining. Just hang tight. Welcome everyone again to this webinar on how to increase your operational efficiency and fraud intelligence with Guardian Analytics Fraud Analytics. Uh, I am Eric Cranley, Vice President of Product Management at Guardian Analytics. I'm going to talk about fraud analytics and fraud intelligence <coughs> and uh, touch upon the high points on uh, how to increase your operational efficiency. Um, let's start with a little bit of housekeeping, uh, as always. Um, if you have two uh, Bright Talk sessions open, you may hear some echo. Uh, these webinars are recorded, and you will receive a link. And please, if you want to ask questions, just enter the question in the question box. So what is uh, exactly Guardian Analytics Fraud Analytics? Uh, what are the KPI for fraud efficiency and how you can derive fraud intelligence? So this is what this webinar will be about. And without further ado, let me go through a quick safe harbor statement. The following is intended to outline our general production direction. It is intended for information purposes only and may not be incorporated into any contract. It is not a commitment to deliver any material code or functionality and should not be relied upon in making purchase decisions. The development, release, and timing of any features or functionality described for Guardian Analytics product remains at the sole discretion of Guardian Analytics. So let's move on. Uh, what does what Gar uh, Guardian Analytics do? Uh, we are in the business of protecting customer financial assets with more than 450 financial institutions as our customer, ranging in scope from million in assets to 600 billion, we analyze the behavior of over 400 million commercial and retail account holders and protect over 5 billion uh, revenue in banking activity each year, making us the number one in behavior analytics platform for fraud detection. Now, let's step into what is fraud analytics uh, defined by behavioral analytics. A day in the life of a fraud manager is about fraud operation efficiency by answering questions such as, such as, do I have enough capacity to handle the trend of red and yellow alerts, critical alerts? How efficient is my analyst team in alert disposition? What is the average time to close a case, for example, or simply to walk through a, 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 an alert? Being able to analyze all those various fraud activities uh, and giving the context uh, to uh, either a fraud business intelligence team or a case investigation team is very important because at, at stake is not only how you can detect in real time, which we do with our machine learning behavior analytics, but how much context you can gain on the fraud intelligence so that you can actually stop the fraud once and for all because it may reoccur. Now, there's a notion of self-service analytics we're introducing here, which is brand new in the space of fraud analytics. If you think about self-service analytics, uh, Garner would define it as it's a form of business intelligence in which lines of business professionals here, fraud managers uh, and business intelligence uh, managers in the context of fraud, are enabled and encouraged to perform queries and generate reports on their own with nominal IT support. And this is a very important notion. What you're going to see here is all the capa capability that you can see, monitoring a fraud alert, analyzing it, visualizing it, exploring it for better fraud intelligence. In our case, cross uh, two main channels, digital banking and real-time payments as defined as wire, P2P, and ACH, and digital banking online and mobile, can be easily done by uh, the lines of businesses, basically by yourself. Uh, and or any BI team uh, with nominal IT support. And it is easy to use. It is updated daily. You can drill down on what matters, matters the most. And 
first and foremost, you can use your standard favorite tools, be they Excel, if you are just as code and code standard users, or if you are Power users, you can use Power BI uh, or Tableau. So what we're providing here, and just a, a little bit of architecture foundation, we have a Guardian Analytics fraud analytics data layer that is being pushed on a regular basis. Uh, it's uh, organized, structured in a way that you can derive maximum insights into your fraud data. So how can you increase your fraud operational efficiency? First of all, it is about enabling cross-digital banking and real-time payment fraud analytics. This is a very important uh, capability whereby not only you have uh, multiple channels that you can view, uh, uh, but you can analyze across those channels. In terms of fraud intelligence, we are focusing on two main type of activities. One is activity analytics, transaction activity analytics based on our behavioral data and location analytics, both of them derive the risk. So not only you have fraud detection, but you're able to gain fraud risk indicators based on fraud intelligence. Now again, the data layer we're providing allows you not only to see and combine the data within your own core banking platforms, but also to uh, integrate, if you wanted, external data. Could be anything, uh, cybersecurity suspicious IP, could be your own intelligence, could be a list of customers that you want to have high priority on. Uh, all those data can be integrated very easily. Now let's step into um, the fraud analytics itself. So uh, I'm gonna preface this. I'm, we're gonna walk you through uh, the dashboards, the out of the box dashboards and reports and the, meaning, the meaningfulness of it. And then we're gonna step into a demo where I will demo to you how easy it is to use with the standard Excel. And if you wanna gain more power, uh, I will be using Tableau. So, What you see here is the first step of uh, any analytics and BI exercise, monitoring. In this case, we're gonna monitor alert statuses. And what we intend to do is to have very powerful, but yet very simple to understand intuitively what's happening. So this is a funnel chart that you find in cells <laughs> mostly, but it's being used here for alert. And the key idea is as the life cycle of an alert, which is different than the life cycle of a case, uh, usually an analyst go through either viewing it, dismissing it, not viewing it, uh, open the case, or closing the case. So these are, if you had the alert status states within the life cycle, and it's very important for a fraud manager to understand uh, how the funnel is. And let me tell you what I mean by this. So let's w go through a multi-channel one. In the exercise here, uh, we have uh, online businesses uh, channel, online retail, um, uh, wire and ACH. As you can see, uh, the visual are different and uh, you can argue visually that one on the left is looks like a champagne glass and one on the upper bottom right is looks like a cognac glass. I'm not a drinker, believe me, but they are, they are not equal in terms of uh, capacity and efficiency. The champagne glass basically says that you know you have a decent dismiss, uh, and, and usually the number counts too. Uh, with machine learn learning and uh, behavior analytics, we have a very low rate of um, false positives, so that numbers here counts. But more importantly, is how the ratio goes down from dismiss to not view to view to case open and case close. It is very important that you keep a decent conversion ratio between view and case open. In other words, if the, the accuracy that you have or the insight you have in, in the view layer is not good enough, then the case open may last very long. Basically, the investigators have to come back, look at the evidence, go back and forth, and that's a lot of costs um, that are um, you know, impacting your, your efficiency. And you can see on the right bottom, we do an example. These are all mock data, by the way, of a situation where efficiency is at risk here on ACH, uh, whereby you have a a very long uh, view whereby people, I mean, analysts needs to view a lot 
and and um, you can see also an enlargement of the case open, and of course the case closed takes more time. So those visuals are very powerful, give you an idea how uh, efficiently alerts are being disposed, uh, which is a very important notion in fraud management. Another key uh, visual is what we call monitoring operational KPI. That, there's absolutely nothing new in the final, uh, we are just basically in, getting inspiration from finance reporting, right, year to date, month to date, uh, week to date, day, and of course comparing to the previous year to date. Uh, these are very powerful function that basically we bring to your favorite standard Excel tool or any kind of BI tool. Uh, that you can go and monitor. And it's being updated on a 24 hours basis. Uh, what you can see here is just a comparison of year to date of red alerts and yellow alerts versus previous alerts. And as you can see, there's also some uh, thresholds that you can easily set up, by the way, in Excel. We just give you this out of the box. Um, the, the, the principle is, Less alert is the better, so, uh, and it's, it's reverse in case, so the more, you, uh, you, the more cases you are closing, the better it is. But the alerts that you see, the threshold, sorry, that you can see it turns red, orange, or yellow, depending on, on, on the variances of uh, year-to-date versus previous year-to-date, month-to-date versus previous month-to-date, so on and so forth. We have other sophisticated functions I will show you in the demo, where you could do 30 days rolling, uh, seven days rolling, so uh, standard Excel tools, even if you have millions of rows coming in, the fraud analytics from Guardian will allow you to gain insight and get key operational KPIs such as this one. Um, this is an example of the operational KPI, same framework applied to cases, case open, case close. It's the same principle. Now, you can step into the second part of, uh, monitor, of fraud analytics. Once you monitor, you want to analyze it. So analyzing means what? So you, basically you need to detect some trends, uh, either in the yellow or in the red or both of them. Uh, and the, the simplest reason is you want to be sure that um, the capacity is there to handle it uh, next week. Um, and, uh, and you want to understand also the trend. Now, trends may spike or may have a, a growth trend for many reasons. Uh, can be purely operational because you're adding a platform, uh, more feed, but you kind of know. But still, you want to know the capacity to absorb it or uh, uh, an, an attack. So you would have a spike, and you would know in case of attack what it does mean because you would have a normal trend, and all of a sudden you spiked up, right? And that will be given by, by the standard report we're giving to you. You, you, you have those trending, those dotted lines are just uh, moving average. And uh, right now it's being set as three month moving average. But you can set that two, six, whatever you want. Now, a second part of analysis that uh, Guardian Analytics for Analytics is giving to you is analyzing the risk indicator. Uh, this is very important because the behavior analytics we have is based on a couple of models around payment channels, right? We have models for wire, for ACH or DFI, RDFI, online business, online retail, and all those risk indicators are different. But they provide very important context. Well, you know, the context of a wire being at risk, the context of an ACH or DFI being at risk is very different from an online retail or mobile uh, or business. And what we do provide here is the ability for you to, in a you know, lens of an eye, understand uh, what are the biggest risk indicators that you are uh, being impacted with right now. This is an example. You see before it was uh, online business, and this is uh, the wire risk factor alert distribution that is different. And again, these are mock data. As you can see here, by the way, in the spectrum of what we are uh, investigating, you have beneficiary trust, and you're going to see in the demo a little more details, but you can see we also integrate cybersecurity here, like uh, in this particular case, you have a trustee, for example. But we can, you can integrate uh, with the data model, uh, the data layer, sorry, uh, suspicious IP coming from uh, cyber threats, for example. 
Now, as for the cases, uh, it's, it's actually the same principle. We give you very simple uh, charts for you to understand uh, the main stages of a case, open and close. Uh, and you can, of course, do all the training that uh, I have shown to you in the alert. Case, category, and resolution. Also, then we're stepping into the operation efficiency. Um, you have uh, uh, charts that allows you to understand the distribution of the case statuses, that allows you to understand, uh, you know, how efficient uh, the case uh, the case management is. And what we're providing to you uh, is the ability to manage your fraud team. And this has been a request all over the, our, our customer base. Um, and we totally understand that uh, you do have a team, you know, small or large, but uh, they are working every day. And uh, you need to have a way to, uh, to monitor, reward, uh, control. And uh, we have um, not only the ability for you to look at the, the case uh, efficiency, but also the alert efficiency I'm going to show you later on. And here, for example, you have the average time to close. Uh, per per owner, uh, and and it's a very uh, flexible model. In other words, uh, we do understand that some um, fraud team are in a, let's say an open open case management. Anyway, in other words, it's not fully assigned to an owner, but it could be redistributed around the pool. It will take account for that, so that you you have a, a good vision of who who is doing what and what are the efficiency. Now. Fraud intelligence. So what is fraud intelligence? Uh, it is about uh, gaining more context, first of all, so that uh, you can share the context of a fraud to either a case investigation team or to another prosecution team, for example, that happens to be outside the bank. But you need to gain fraud intelligence so that you can stop the, alert, uh, the fraud alert once and for all. Uh, and for that, the platform needs to be open. Um, and, and that's what we're going to show to you today. Uh, first of all, uh, we are uh, developing visualization around uh, transaction activity and location. These are, because of the faster payment going more uh, digital, online, mobile, it's very important for you to understand uh, uh, visually where your um, beneficiaries are uh, from a wire or ACH standpoint, where the originators are. But from an IP standpoint, it's also important you can visualize um, if that IP that happens to go being green but still suspicious at what level, at what stages of uh, the, the, the fraud activity they are in. Uh, you can decide to stop them before or simply not to stop them because it's just a desktop or a mo the phone of uh, your customer that has been uh, uh, compromised, but you want to call them and inform them. Another part of visualization is segmentation, and profiling. Uh, this is very important for customer risk monitoring. Uh, usually, you would do a brackets of transaction, and you will basically use Excel and try to count who, uh, which transaction are falling into it and which customer are using those types of transactions. Uh, this, is, this is a very hard job to do when you have uh, millions and millions of records coming in. And more importantly, if your uh, user population uh, transaction is changing, in other words, you have new user coming in, uh, Millennium style, uh, they're probably transacting less, but still have fraud. And you want to be able to detect that. Uh, we are proposing visualization here that allows you not only to locate uh, the originators, but the beneficiaries to understand if uh, your customer, for example, know that uh, they, uh, one of the be multiple beneficiaries has been outside the United States or any of their uh, normal countries. Um, the other key point, and I will use a demo for that, is the ability to do uh, dynamic uh, segmentation, um, statistical term and clustering. And that's an important notion because, again, if the user population change, you need to be able to go and say, okay, tell me what the new segmentation is about so that I can rectify the thresholds for the next rev of customer uh, risk uh, revision. And uh, our fraud analytics platform allows you to do that. So let me uh, switch to the demo. 
So what I'm going to show you is, is two things, uh, using Excel uh, and then uh, Tableau. I could use Power BI, but uh, we like the Tableau here. And what you're going to see here is basically the same slide uh, you have here, but I want to stress on uh, two things, context and interactivity. As you can see here, this is the KPI I've been showing to you. And underneath, this is an alert dashboard, uh, uh, this free dashboard here that we're providing out of the box, uh, a risk dashboard and the team productivity. And uh, you can see here, this is the KPI. But more importantly, if you scroll a bit down, you have the alert volume, but you have also the alert statuses case CC, case open, case closed, case open, dismiss, not view. And they are all linked. And you have those slicers, uh, hence the term uh, in analytics, slice and dice. Slicers basically allows you to, to slice a dimension. Dimension is just a, 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 an angle that you want to get. So for example, you, know, you want to see 2017 only uh, on online business, you have it. But more importantly is the interaction between the alert volume and the case statuses. So, Let's say you want to say how many cases have been closed. Not only you can see it right away here per year and month, uh, but you can see also what are the case closed that are red alerts over the years and the month, and which one are the yellow and you still have the, the little trending over two month period here. That inter interactivity uh, across uh, the channels, for example, here wire alert volume, same trick. If you want to say, uh, okay, I want to see but did they dismiss? That's important. You can see that here, but you see that there's been dismissal on a couple of red alerts and a couple of yellow ones. And you might ask yourself why. So that level of context and interactivity um, is key for a fraud manager to, um, to manage the efficiency of the team. So that's the alert dashboard. Uh, you can do way more. Uh, these are out of the box that we're providing, but uh, if you want to have a, uh, a slice and dice of a different view, the, the, the data layer will provide that to you. From a dashboard perspective, um, it, it, it provides context, right? It, it's just the preparation for fraud intelligence. Uh, you want to know uh, the interaction between those various risk factors, online businesses, for example, and you can see it's a series of them, right? Account user, infrequent user. Uh, you want to understand how they've been treated. You know, there's one case open here, there's four, uh, sorry, one case closed, four case open uh, per date, per month. Uh, but you can say, okay, look, uh, I want to understand uh, how many are location-based, right? If you click on it, not only it tells you, well, there's number 198 uh, over uh, the two years, uh, and of course, you can select years. But then it tells you here uh, also the, the, the uh, criticality uh, in terms of volume. So again, context and interaction uh, allows you, you know, in the, in the click to understand everything's happening. And of course, it's multi-channel. Uh, I, I liked it here, online business and wire, but you could argue you scroll on the right, you could have ACH uh, and, and all kinds of channels. Team productivity. Uh, team productivity, it's a very important notion, and, and uh, we are very serious about this because it, it, uh, at stake is the efficiency of the team. Uh, we have alert disposition as, a, as a, an average time that we're monitoring. So you can see here, Chris Cook, uh, you have a little spark line. Uh, but more importantly, you can see uh, what's happening. You can see who is doing good, who is doing best. Um, and you can look at the alert disposition. You can look at the cases, which is a different cycle because, and it could, it's still within the fraud team. It's not within the ML team. You are still operating within the fraud team whereby you say, okay, they open the case, they're going to close the case before they're transferring. But uh, you can see the amount of time. Again, these are mock data. Uh, it could be faster. But the main idea is your ability to understand who is efficiently uh, working on both alert disposition and cases. And of course, you want to know the volume, right? That's kind of obvious. But the level of granularity allows really uh, any fraud manager to manage a team that, you know, we just have four, but just, you can go up to 130. I mean, it, it's totally extensible. And, and, and have an operational dashboard. So that is about um, uh, 
fraud analytics uh, on the operational side. Let me switch to fraud intelligence. So first thing is, again, this is done on Excel. You remember I told you that our data layer allows you to integrate suspicious IP? And I'm going to walk through this for you. So remember those alerts are coming in every day, every minute, every second. Now, if you want to see visually what's going on, uh, the fraud analytics allows you to do a simple visual like this, right? That it's an animation where you can see over the years, since 2016 going up to 2017, uh, the impact of, uh, in, at least in the United States. Uh, and you can zoom in, uh, right? Here is, okay, look, what is this thing right here, which by the way, there's a risk score. You can see the latitude, longitude. You can have the risk score. You have the risk color. Uh, you have the creation date of that alert. So it, it does allow you to have a notion of where uh, there's the most impact uh, per geographies. And that's also very important because you may not know that the state may be targeted, for example, or, or a hacker may open an AWS, a cloud AWS account somewhere and attacking New Jersey, and he's in New Jersey, so you don't know, but our system will detect it, but will tell you it's happening right there. So that's a first step into uh, uh, fraud intelligence. Uh, the second step I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna switch uh, tool. Uh, so hang with me a second. I'm going to switch tool and uh, go to our Tableau. And as you can see here, we're still in the visual of uh, activity analytics and location analytics. This is an a wire originator and beneficiary location map. Uh, you can do the same for ICH or DFI or DFI. Every single time you have um, actors uh, and, and transfer of money, uh, you have the ability to look at this. So this map shows you two things. Where are the beneficiary? And if you highlight, you look on this, for example, here, this you can see this is alert status case open. The beneficiary country is the United States. You have the name of the beneficiary. You have the direction. You have the originator, but you have a risk color red, as well as the risk factors and the amount. So you have the ability to look at and, and, and understand, first of all, the distribution, the, log the geographic distribution of the beneficiaries here, and you can see that you know, it's all across the world, which is not forcefully, maybe it could be a surprise for some customers. And you have other map. Uh, this map shows originator country, which is mostly states, but their beneficiaries, the same actually dashboard you have seen before. But you can see, for example, uh, this beneficiary is in Russia, with all generating the US for an amount of 136. So again, if you have those data updated uh, on a daily basis, it does give you way more fraud intelligence as to uh, any customer intelligence. And it's something that uh, some customer wouldn't know that, that uh, they, their beneficiaries are in other states, other countries. And then that steps into what I call um, risk segmentation and customer profiling. Uh, so how you want to see those points is, is actually, if you look at this axis amount, these are all the wire amount that you would have in your user population. You can, by the way, select for one customer if you wish, and the average risk score. What the tool would do is automatically segment it. You see cluster one, two, three, and four. What it does here and say, you know, this uh, kind of orange grayish thing is, a, is cluster two because they're all in the 88 to uh, uh, 120 range. So they automatically segment for you the user population. You can see there's one here, there's another one here, cluster three, there's another one here, which is, by the way, the most risky, uh, average risk score 10, and there's another one here, all right? And you have some outliers that you want to take a look at. So these are fraud intelligence type of capability that only our fraud detection analytics platform can provide to you in a second. Uh, it's important for customer risk scoring uh, because you can go back and revise, but uh, it's also important just because you want to understand the segmentation of your user population. 
so what you're going to do with this, uh, with a BI tool such as Tableau or Power BI, you can actually build a dashboard. And this is an example of one dashboard where you remember the first map that I did, which is the origin beneficiary. And here you have the wire segmentation. And again, in, in context and interactivity, you say, okay, I want to understand who is that guy here. You click on it, and you can see this uh, cluster beneficiary Lanitor with Ariscope 2 happens to have two other locations here. She's the same, but you know, for some reason she's in China and she's in Russia. And you, you can do the same for, you know, uh, let's say a high risk score here. Well, this one is right in Russia. And there's an inbound originator, Jacqueline, from the U.S., uh, by the way, but the risk score is red and you have the risk factor unusual OVI, um, uh, unusual frequency of uh, originator. Um, so this, those visuals are very powerful. I mean, uh, we can, on, on, on location and activity, you have other ways visually. Uh, I'm gonna switch here to the last one I wanna show you. Uh, this is a tree map, uh, heat map, tree map. But in a second, you have a user population, and in case this is why you can do it for ACH. And origin to beneficiary, you want to understand, okay, who are in the red, who are not in red. But you know, in that second, that surface tile you see here, you can see that uh, here, red, uh, Ira, Flagney, Russia, uh, 211,248.49. Uh, well, something's going on here. And, and you know, you can leave aside those green or you can parse that, but you want to go after the red and the yellow. So, this is how powerful our tool is. Uh, we're going to switch back to um, the slide now. I'm going to stop sharing. So the key benefits uh, in, in summary is we are providing to you a multi-channel fraud analytics tool that allows you to do fraud and case management operation efficiency. Uh, allows you to do fraud intelligence activity and location analytics. It is self-service with minimal IT support, easy to use, as you can see, updated daily. You can drill, it, drill down to whatever the most, uh, and it works on standard BI tools. Uh, in other words, the power of it is the data layer, and then the usage of it is, uh, you know, your favorite BI tools and Excel. Um, Without that, uh, maybe some of you say, wow, <laughs> I was not expecting uh, such a comprehensive uh, report and dashboard and capability. Uh, maybe it's more confusing, but we're here to help. Uh, please uh, feel free to help us here, to, to call us. We, uh, we have more resources for you to, uh, to look at. Uh, everything we are doing on P2P, uh, wire, fraud detection, fraud cockpit. Uh, and we will be at ABA Financial Crime Enforcement in Gaylor, December 2nd and 4th. You want to go and visit us on our booth. Um, this wrap up this session. I'm going to open the Q&A session. And by the way, feel free to contact us at successcardinalist.com. We'd we'll love to help you if you, are, you need uh, any fraud analytics uh, uh, reporting. So I'm opening up the Q&A session. Let me look at the questions from the audience. Okay, I have a first question. Uh, for team productivity report, is it possible to show per analyst how many alerts they view, dismiss, create cases, or close cases in one table? Yes, it is. Uh, right now, uh, what we're doing is uh, you dismiss, actually you've seen it, it's one, well, it's one table for the whole uh, alert life cycle, which include created case or closed cases. So uh, it is already there, uh, but you can create uh, other, other type of, uh, of tables you wanted to. Uh, do you provide, I have another question, do you provide out-of-box dashboard and reports uh, how, or we have to build our own. So the power of this fraud analytics data layer is you can really build very powerful ones on your own. Uh, uh, we, we certainly can help you. We will be shipping with fraud analytics a series of uh, out-of-the-box dashboard like the one you have seen. Uh, uh, and we will have a small tutorial for you to basically be able to, to build your own. And again, this is Excel. 
uh, it, 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 the tutorials are for any lines of businesses easy to understand. Um, there is nominal IT support. What I mean by this is what IT will be um, performing is just uh, the data ingestion. So we will provide, we will work IT just to get the data stream up to the place where you want your data to be secured. Uh, I have a question. We have our own BI team. Can we augment? Um, sorry, I misread. Can we open the fraud analytics data with our own? We usually report at the customer level, and we want to link the alert across the channel. Uh, this is a very good question. We, we've, we've been often asked, can we do a, a customer-centric view? Uh, in marketing, we call it customer 360. Yes, you can. Uh, because this data model, and I didn't show it today, but you have uh, uh, a schema, so in terms of uh, data architecture, we have Star schema is there uh, for uh, a wire, ACH, or DFI, or DFI, online business, online retail, that allows you to connect things like IP and do suspicious IP coming from, let's say, a cyber, a cyber feed, uh, external, totally external to Guardian Analytics, or you can create your own feed. I mean, you may want to see, again, um, many cases you have your own list of customers uh, that you want to go and track. You want to be sure that anything that hits that table, uh, you're going to be alerted. So yes, uh, the data model allows you to do that. And the ability to do cross channels is quite easy because each of those data schema have um, tables uh, that are built for unicity. So you have unique IP, unique account number, unique user, and uh, where, where we can, so where our platform knows the relationship, we will attach them. Uh, where well, we cannot, you can use those unique ID and concatenate them and build your own uh, unique ID. So it sounds a bit technical, but if you have a BI team, they would ex exactly know what to do. And they could bring in, uh, you can bring or ask them to bring the CRM, customer relationship database in for you to have a customer centric view. Why keeping, you know, uh, all the precision you have on the various payment channels here. Uh, what's the format of data, uh, and what reporting tools do we need to generate the charts of our own? The format of data is CSVs. I mean, it cannot be more simple than that. Uh, it's flat CSVs coming in, um, so Excel, Tableau, whatever can, can read it. And again, we ship it with uh, a data schema that allows to do the join and the structure. Again, in Excel, there's no macro whatsoever. It is just simple power queries. Uh, and Power Pivot that are standard features in Excel starting 2016, and I think they're increasing that, that, that capability. As for Tableau, same thing, they have ability to join uh, and read the CSVs uh, and, and, and bring up the data model. Uh, we were under the impression that this miss was used after viewing, and when the analyst considered it safe, is that not the correct way to use the status? Uh, well, th there's three, st I mean, there are four steps. You can dismiss, you can view, not view. Uh, yes, it's a, st it's a stage. Uh, you could actually, you could have a dismiss view, and someone could come back. I mean, it could be the owner or someone else that I want to view it back again. So. There is no um, forcefully a sequential state to that. Uh, it's, it's just um, how the fraud team would like to consider that, that alert. And uh, what we're reporting is just the various state changes. And last question I have here. Is there a different tool that monitors real-time P2P separated than uh, the, fraud, the fraud map online or fraud map wires in ACH? Now, um, P2P, so we, are, we have models to take to, into account any risk of fraud on peer-to-peer uh, -peer transfer. And if you look at uh, mechanisms like Zelly, uh, Venmo, but also BillPay, um, we do already detect uh, any fraudulent transfers. And that model is being applied for any P2P type. Uh, right now, it's being deployed for bill pay, for example. Uh, when Zelle schema is going to be uh, ingested into it, it will do it for Zelle. 
but it will be exactly the same system. It's already there, and uh, the, the, it will be expressed out visually in, in our visual analytics. And uh, for fraud analytics, it will be basically uh, extracted out in the same way on the data layer for you to build all those dashboards and, uh, and monitor the fraud. Okay. I think that's all the questions I have. Thank you for listening in. And uh, again, please call us if you're interested in Guardian Analytics, Ford Analytics. Goodbye.